nothing in my experience is less understood and more controversial than qualitative sampling. Interviewing people, observing, doing case documents, doing focus groups, the methods aren't so controversial. It's the sampling. What are those things based upon? And so we're going to look at three major issues that can be resolved around sampling. I'm Michael Quinn Patton, and I've been working on these issues for over 40 years. The first edition of Qualitative Research and Evaluation Methods came out in 1980. And as the field has grown and become more diverse and more credible, issues around sampling remain at the nub of controversy. So we're going to look at how to navigate three qualitative sampling issues. What to call qualitative sampling, the sample size issue, what can you do with small samples, and whether to call what we're doing case selection or to actually use the word sampling. So in the traditional research process, we define the problem, do a research design, and select a sample. And you see here that everything you have to say about something depends upon the sample. What you find, what you're going to communicate will ultimately come down to sample. And when there are controversies about findings, it's often about the sample where the controversy resides. What that diagram, traditional diagram, leaves off is before defining the problem, you have to determine the purpose of the inquiry. And that purpose leads to the purpose for the sample, which is why we call it purposeful sampling. You determine the inquiry purpose, then focus the questions, then decide what data to collect, and select the relative relevant cases, which is purposeful sampling. That connects the nature of the sample to the nature of the inquiry and its purpose. Determine purpose, do purposeful sampling. The difficulty with qualitative sampling is that the very word sample evokes probability sampling, generalizing from a sample to a population statistically. And so, in using the language of qualitative sampling, distinguishing it from probability sampling raises the question of what to call it. Purposive sampling is widely used in academic settings. Um, in evaluation settings, we tend to use the word purposeful sampling. The actual techniques are not any different. Purposive, purposeful refer to the same kinds of options for selecting samples. They're simply different words. So why nitpick? Well, purposeful sampling involves strategically selecting information-rich cases to study, cases that by their nature and substance will illuminate the inquiry question being investigated. It directs us to purpose. Why then choose purposeful over purposive? Well, I'm going to offer you three reasons. The first is the word purposeful is simply an ordinary word. It's understandable to lay people. As an evaluator and researcher, I'm working with ordinary folks most of the time. People without research degrees, people without research methods, uh, courses and, and, and backgrounds. And so I want to use language that makes sense to them. The word purposive is not even a word. It's a made-up academic statistical reference word you're going to see. But purposeful is a word that people understand. We're doing a study for a purpose and we're sampling purposefully. I find the word is understandable. The second then is that purposive actually originated as a type of statistical sampling. I found this as I got into this issue in deciding whether to abandon purposive for purposeful, I investigated the origin of the term and found that it originated as a type of statistical sampling. The 1925 meeting in Rome of the International Statistics Institute, almost 100 years ago, included very vigorous debate on various sampling approaches. The delegates ended by adopting a formal resolution that distinguished two kinds of representative sampling, random sampling, 
and purposive sampling. Purposive sampling involves sampling population elements such that the chosen group should have average values approximately equal to the population averages for the characteristics already known. At this time, there wasn't yet confidence that random sampling would give good representative samples to generalize to a population. To assure that generalization, the preference at that time was for what we would now call quota sampling, specifically picking a sample to represent the population. But in either case, purposive is really has its roots as a statistical form of sampling. The way it got carried into qualitative inquiry was that you're picking the cases instead of randomly sampling them. But it's not really accurate to describe what we're doing as purposeful. And the third reason is that I prefer the term purposeful sampling to what statisticians call qualitative inquiry sampling as non-probability sampling. This diagram from a statistics book describes qualitative sampling as non-probability sampling methods and basically describes qualitative sampling by what it doesn't do, probability sampling, instead of what it does do, sample purposely. So that's why I originally designated the term purposeful sampling in 1980 and have stuck with that because the word is understandable, it doesn't have statistical origins, and it distinguishes what we do do versus what we non don't do as non-probability sampling. Still, we have to deal with this mental model problem that people associate sampling with statistics. Um, and that becomes an issue both in sample size and in how to refer to what we do. Sample size in statistics has rules. If you want a certain confidence level for a certain population, you have to sample a certain size. But in qualitative sampling, there is no rule. It depends upon purpose and how much depth you're going into. You can do a single case study in a qualitative inquiry that may go on over weeks, uh, even years, as you follow a person or an organization uh, or a, a program over time. Or you may, at the other end, interview 20 people for an hour. So sample size is a trade-off between depth, how deep are you going to go, and breadth, how much are you going to ask a few questions of a lot of people. And so what can you do with small samples remains an issue. And that's where we go back to purpose. What's the purpose of the inquiry and how does the sample and sample size fulfill that purpose? You end up having to make the case for the reasonableness of your sample based upon time, availability, resources, and purpose. Purposeful sampling is ultimately driven by purpose. Let's use the coronavirus pandemic as an example of some of these different purposes. Qualitative inquiry can generate theory to help explain the different reactions to vaccinations. Uh, can evaluate programs aimed at educating people about coronavirus and the responses to it. It can illuminate some issue or phenomenon, uh, like how communities responded to public policies around coronavirus, or an in-depth understanding of something like how the schools adapted to remote learning during the pandemic, a systems mapping about how different parts of the systems, health systems, uh, political systems, cultural systems, uh, economic systems uh, were interwoven around the pandemic, capturing diverse perspectives on things like the vaccination, masking, uh, long COVID, and constructing quantitative questions. Qualitative inquiry is a way to generate questions for surveys where you can take a sample to generalize from to a larger population. These and other purposes of qualitative inquiry have a major effect on what kind of sample you need, what's going to be credible, what's going to be useful. Which brings us to the final issue, whether to even use the term sampling for qualitative inquiry or 
to simply refer to selecting cases. I'm going to draw upon the wisdom and poetry of William Shakespeare in what may well be the most parodied soliloquy in all of literature, the to be or not to be speech from Hamlet, applied to this issue. And here's how it goes. To sample or not to sample, but to select cases, that is the question. Whether tis nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outraged statisticians for whom sampling is only and ever will be random sampling to generalize to a population or to take arms against the purists and by opposing them to sample purposefully. To get on with data collection, aye, there's the rub. For in whatever inquiry may come, when we have shuffled off the language contention, must give us pause and focus. There's the respect for the people interviewed and observed. Not subjects, nor cases, nor a sample, but people with stories and lives. The insolence of numbers only, devoid of storied life. So call it a sample, or case selection. It matters not to those whose worlds we seek to enter, but make it purposeful, whatever it be called. Serve that specified purpose with intention and forethought. Fulfill that purpose with rigor and resolve. To grunt and sweat under a worthy purpose. To discover what is not known. To understand with depth and illumination the undiscovered country that puzzled the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have. Soft you now into the fray of inquiry and name the thing you do. Sampling or case selection, and make this choice the least of thy sins remembered. So the choice of language is one of context. Who is going to respond in what way to your terminology so that you direct attention to findings and not to concern about whether it's called a sample or selected cases. That's my take on these three issues of what to call qualitative inquiry. I call it purposeful sampling, how to deal with small sample sizes by being clear about their purpose and what to call this, whether it's case selection or purposeful sampling depends upon purpose and context. If you're interested in more of these methods videos, uh, you're welcome to subscribe to my channel. I'll be doing more. Um, and here are some other videos that may be of interest. If you simply click on my picture, the subscribe button will come up and that will keep you posted of new videos. I expect to do quite a few now on uh, methods and qualitative methods, mixed methods, and other evaluation issues. Thank you for listening. Uh, go forth and be purposeful.